What's going on folks, Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and you may notice a different setup here. Well, we're not really dealing with unboxings or things that are set up in the office, which is right over here. We are dealing with more tech side of things, which is this guy you see right there, the Elegoo Saturn Ultra 4 resin 3D printer. Now the folks over at Elegoo were nice enough to send this over to me to take a look at and review and kind of give my thoughts on it. So I thought we would go ahead and talk through some of the things that I've just seen already in just the process of opening up the printer that I really, really like. And then obviously we'll go through the process of printing and, you know, we'll pick out some models and, and see what happens. So first of all, uh, again, this is my fourth overall 3D printer. This is my third resin printer. So I'm not, uh, you know, a novice in the world of 3D printing and how these things all work. However, you know, obviously there are other folks out there that this is kind of their whole gig. They know a lot more about 3D printing, but I'm kind of giving you what I would take as more of like an every man's take on 3D printing, right? I know a little bit about a lot of things, so maybe we can kind of walk through and just talk about stuff that I think is really cool that I noticed just out the gate. So why don't I go ahead and flip it around and we'll talk about kind of what came in the box and the general look of everything. So here is the machine itself, very nice clean lines. You can see we've got kind of our venting over here on the side, Elegoo logo, here's our touch screen. And then over here we have power, switch, USB, and there's actually a Wi-Fi antenna that you can actually just screw right on there. Uh, I haven't plugged it in. I thought we could also kind of go through what's in the box, right? So you obviously get the printer. You have this kind of plastic resin tray over here disposable gloves you've got funnels for draining your resin back into a bottle two disposable carbon masks we've got a couple of allen keys and a variety of screws a metal putty knife a plastic putty knife and the usb stick you obviously have the power supply and the power cord the very sparse manual we'll talk about that in a second and then obviously the build plate now, I really, really like the machine. I like the look of it, and some of the stuff that's in it is just, it's very easy to use, which I think is pretty awesome. And again, being a, a Saturn, this is a much larger print bed than, say, something like the Mars. And you can see it kind of shows off everything we just talked about here. Now, uh, one thing that kind of bugs me, I said resin tray, it's, I guess it's, oh no, it is the resin tray. Um, is it doesn't really give us too much in the manual. Now, like I said, I've played around with these kind of printers in the past, but if this is your first printer, you might be looking for a little bit more information on how to go about using this. But you can see the dimensions here. Build volume is 218 by 122 by 220. And probably the coolest thing that I wanted to showcase here is if we go ahead and lift up the hood, we can see our Z-axis here. There's actually, this is a cover. There's an AI camera in the corner there, which I don't know what that can do. It's also something that's not really outlined in the manual. I'm hoping the software will tell it to us, but it is a self-leveling printer. I think I can actually install this build plate with one hand. So as you can see, it's kind of got this sort of set up here. So if we go over here, we can just kind of slide the build plate on and then lock it down and that's it. We're ready to go right out the box. We could just dump resin right in the tray, right there's the fill line. Obviously we have, there's film that we need to remove underneath the tray. But essentially right now, if everything was calibrated and we had a model wanted to go, we could literally hit print right now. We don't have to mess around with leveling the bed at all, which is crazy. Uh, that's really awesome to see. Another thing, right, obviously we have some screws here. There's a plate. Nice and easy. It's nice as you don't have to kind of do any crazy modding for this. Just take these Allen screws out. This plate will pop off the back, and then you have a port there for whatever kind of expansion you might want to use it for. Uh, I think probably the most common would be some sort of fume extraction device because we are dealing with a resin printer, so you need to be careful of the fumes. But like I said, the, the, um, the manual is pretty sparse. It's got a little bit here about, you know, setting up the software for Chidu Box and how to use that. Again, I haven't plugged in the software. We'll do that in just a minute to kind of see what's in there. But like I said, if you're only going off the manual, you might not feel comfortable maybe doing this. Don't know what the camera can do. This sort of resin tray over here, people might look at this and be like, does this, does this go in here? What, what, how do I use this? It's not really explained in the manual. So that's my only kind of really nitpicky complaint about it. 
I mean, if even if you were to just go back and look at the Mars, Elegu Mars video I did a couple years back, you have to put that in there. You have to do, there's thumb screws to tighten down. There's bed leveling that needs to happen. All this kind of stuff that you need to work on yourself to get the printer into the point where it's ready to receive a print and go. Whereas we did this one-handed, the plate's on, and now we're ready to print. There are test prints and things on there. I'm curious to see how the Wi-Fi works. So I got to get, you know, fume extraction lines set up over here so that we can get the print going. But we'll probably jump over to the computer next and take a look at the software and see if maybe it gives us any more information or kind of tutorials on how to use it. All right, so I just wanted to showcase what was on the USB stick that came with it. There was a version of Cheeto Box, which is, again, your slicing software. And then there is primarily the manual here, which is only 17 pages. And unfortunately, the digital version here of the manual isn't really giving us anything different than the print. Um, but I just wanted to showcase, again, here's all of the pieces. I'm still not really sure what this resin tray is for. It looks like the build plate and the tank might be able to sit inside it. I don't really know what the usage of it is, but it doesn't tell me. And again, I don't think it's really necessary or needed. But if you are somebody who's looking to learn all about your printer, you're not going to get too much from the manual. Again, not too much on how to use the AI or anything. Uh, it walks you through how to set it up. Setting up the software was basically exactly what you see here. I installed it. You can also just download the latest version off of the Cheeto Box website. Uh, and then I basically selected my printer and basically everything else is good to go. I'm not going to mess with any of the code uh, just for the purposes of testing this out as I kind of open up the box and go. So you can see here it is the Saturn Ultra 4. I'm just going with kind of standard here for resin and then the standard print settings. Uh, I ordered just like low VOC Elegoo gray resin off of Amazon. I'll put a link to that in the description. But basically, here it is. We are in our build plate. Now, we can take anything we want and do it here. They obviously give you some test prints. So actually, I kind of really like this. So normally, what I'm used to is this rook here, right? This is the standard rook you see for pretty much any resin printer. Looks like this. But what's interesting is they had an entire set of chess pieces that look like this. So this is the queen. This was, I think, what was this? The Rook here over here is the Knight. So basically you could go here and their test prints. We could, here's the King, right? Let's get the King out here, right? You have all of these different kind of, you could basically print an entire chess set. So why don't we, I think we'll print these four. We'll go pretty ambitious for our first print. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now, again, you might not need to do any supports for these. You might be able to just print them as they are. Uh, and again, I don't think the... It doesn't really tell us anything about how to add supports in the manual. So if you didn't know any better, and you just said, you know what, let's give these a shot and print them as is. All right, so you know what, let's not do any supports. We'll just slice and we'll see what happens when we throw these on the printer. I'm assuming based on their design that they should be able to work. Uh, so, all right, so we've got them sliced. Let's head over to the machine and set it up because I don't think the it really tells us much on how to, uh, let's see, how do we add Wi-Fi to this? After the printer is connected to Wi-Fi, all right, so... Uh, it doesn't actually tell us how to do it. Let's go see how easy that is. All right, I'm gonna peel this off. We have now turned on the machine for the first time. We attached the Wi-Fi antenna. All right, self-device test. Okay, status of LCD screen. The mechanical sensor is being calibrated. Do not touch the device. All right, so it looks like he's going to go through these standard tests. I'll leave this alone. So it looks like you can use USB files. The setup went pretty quick, so we'll go to settings, Wi-Fi. You'll pick whatever your network is. Okay, and then actually it gives you, you actually have to type out your entire little password here. 
So one of the benefits of it, it, it is a Wi-Fi printer is that if it recognizes firmware updates or software updates that need to happen to something with the printer itself, it can just go ahead and update those, download them automatically. So that came up that there was a new update uh, for the printer itself. Important step to note is you are going to want to peel off this film here that says peel this off before printing. And there's also one on the bottom of your build plate, so peel that off as well. To get to that, you just remove these two thumb screws. We're also gonna pop off our cap off of our AI camera here in the back so that hopefully we can figure out exactly how that works. We can go ahead and add a printer. As it's scanning for printers, there it is. Add printer, printer successfully added. So I think we should be good now to print. And it says, in the printer manager, you can turn on the camera. So this here, video surveillance. Let's go ahead and turn that on. Oh, look, there's the inside of the machine. Okay. And then it says, oh, we can even set it up here. Uh, let's see. Where, where, I didn't see an option. It says there's an option to do time lapse as well. Let's see, camera connected. Oh, if we click this, here we go, time lapse. So now we can turn it on to have it just do time lapse prints that everybody always does. Slice network sending to this printer. Send. Now I'm curious if this starts printing automatically. I guess we'll be able to tell via video surveillance. It says it's writing the file currently, as you can see on the bottom there. All right, and as you can see, we are back in the room. It is printing, it's got our percentage here. We can actually pause and stop the print from here. We can go ahead and click the, uh, the video surveillance, I believe. And it'll take us inside the machine right now. And we can see, again, I don't know what that is. It's kind of thing there, but either way, We've got, we can see kind of the print head or, you know, the build plate and the resin vat going up and down. So now we just wait to see when it's done. All right. Well, we have the time lapse. Uh, I looked at it a little bit. It's unfortunate. It looks like uh, we lost um, pretty much everything but one print. But I'll go ahead and showcase it here. I also just wanted to take this as an opportunity to showcase how good the time lapse is I did also notice that it says the models have to be I think over 50 millimeters tall for there to be a time lapse right because obviously it has to get far enough above the vat to be able to showcase the actual build so let's go ahead and hit play so as you can see right there these two didn't make it that one separated off the plate and then it goes dark oh I turned the lights off in the room I didn't realize that it was still printing so I was going to bed I turned the lights off but yeah, you can see that one stops. And then hopefully we'll go check the actual printer and have one of them complete. We'll obviously need to do resin washes and UV curing and things like that, but we'll go ahead and do that now. All right, total print time ended up being three hours. So we'll go ahead and open this up. It looks like the night was the only one that ended up fully printing. So now, We've kind of let this drip. We should be able to just lift this up. Now our build plate will slide out completely. We'll clean that off. Now inside here, we did have one of the prints that almost made it. Unfortunately, well, we'll go ahead and throw that in the alcohol wash as well. Now, again, this is probably a little ambitious for a first-time print. Having not calibrated anything, we threw four pretty complex models on the printer. But I wanted to give it a shot to give it what I thought would be a good test to see how things would be with a purely out-of-box printing solution as, you know, it says that it is. And for what it's worth, I do think the setup was basically non-existent. We just hooked everything up and we went. And then, yeah, we obviously tried a couple of different things. 
But for somebody looking to get into resin printing, obviously I'd say probably the biggest thing with resin printing is fumes, right? And then obviously there is cleanup. So we went ahead and kind of soaked this a little bit here in this alcohol wash to kind of clean off everything. Now it does look like there are, I'd say the model came out pretty good. There is a little bit of shrinkage in some spots and it looks like we actually didn't oops, get a full print possibly on the bottom of the mouth. Looks like some of that, I don't know if you can see that, but we didn't actually get the full complete mouth. It looks like it just stopped for whatever reason. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this all up and maybe we'll pick a different print, something a little bit smaller, maybe one specific thing. We'll give it another go. All right. Well, <clears throat> as promised, I picked uh, just, I've never done dice before. I know a lot of dice makers use resin printers to make master molds for their dice. So I went ahead and we got a few dice in here. What do we have? A... Let's see how these came out. We have a D20, 12 percentile, and an 8. Now, if we were to take a look at these, honestly, they came out pretty good. The uh, And again, I've never printed these, so I just tried putting it on the bottom. But the, the face that was on the bottom itself is the one that kind of looks the worst. It's not like um, recessed. So for the D20, that was the one. Uh, actually, you know what? The D12 kind of came out perfect. So did the D8. Actually, there's a little bit of a ridge. I don't know if you can see that ridge line. Kind of right there on the D8. Here's what I was talking about. So this is actually a Comic Sans dice. It's got a little clippy as the D20, but here's the one face, right? You can kind of see it doesn't really have a one. And uh, here is, again, the 12. Looks okay, the one didn't come out too bad. You can see a little bit of issue on the side there. And then the percentile, uh, the 80 face and actually the 10 80 and the 10 didn't come out that great now these are obviously not fully cured they're just uh put in an alcohol wash we've got a uv curing station over here so we'll put those in there and kind of see how they look for the final product but like i said all in all now there's probably like i said things i could do to dial in the saturn 4 ultra more so than what I did, which is I literally, like I said, I took it out of the box. I put it in. I poured the resin in. You saw me do all that. I put it into the software. No changes in the settings. No alterations for the base kind of resin. No supports or anything. And you saw kind of the trials and tribulations that we had. But my thoughts are, if this was going to be your first printer, this is going to probably solve a lot of the headaches that a lot of us have with trying to get the build plate leveled and stuff like that. This kind of does all of that. You don't have to do any crazy modifications to get airflow. You basically have a panel in the back that you can use for your airflow purposes. You can just kind of either print yourself some sort of attachment for it, or maybe just stick a piece of pipe that's the right size in there and then hook it up to some sort of air filtration system to suck that out. The fact that you don't have to use any weird third-party uh, things or try to stick a webcam inside there that it has the camera built in for not only monitoring but also for um, time lapse footage. That's one of the things that so many 3D printers love to have. Like I said, my only kind of complaint is things are pretty sparse on the manual side. Like I said, I'm still trying to figure out what the hell this thing is for. The, the resin tray definitely sits inside here like fits in this space, but what is this for? Like overflow? I really, I'm, it's gonna bother me till one of you tells me what goes on. But anyway, yeah, I'm a big fan. Um, I'll put a bunch of links down in the description to places that I usually go to pick up different minis and awesome people who make 
great D and D related content. But yeah, a huge shout out and thank you to the Elegoo team for sending over the Saturn IV Ultra. Uh, I think it's a fantastic machine. The build plate, as you could see, we talked about it earlier, is pretty large. I'll tell you my one other tiny little complaint is this right here, right? So because of the fact that you have uh, self-leveling, which is kind of what all these actuators you see here are, normally a build plate would just be like the plate itself attached to the Z-axis and that's it. This has these kind of actuators that can go up and down to self-level, but it just gets, it's not easy to clean. You kind of have to like thread through a cloth to clean it out because that's gonna go in and sink into the resin and come up. So resin normally would only be on the underside of the build plate. This is underside and then also in there. So it may just make cleanup a little more challenging for you, but ultimately easier in the long run. So we're gonna go ahead and put our dice here on our curing tray. Go ahead and turn on for I don't know, 30 minutes. And we'll let that UV cure. And I'll post pictures over on social media of what the final dice looks like. I'll also post a link to the files where I got, so they were free, uh, for the Comic Sans dice. So. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.